could almost pose that as we don't think. We don't think. I'm pretty sure of it. A few may wander out there. In the air to center field. And it's Wilson. And there's one out to go. Andy Van Slyke, the batter. The two Bretts sharing a delicious moment. of the 1985 World Champions. To discuss the 1985 World Series, we have former Royals trainer Paul McGannon, who was able to witness this incredible World Series victory. The culmination of a great season. I mean, we had a lot of um, uh, younger players. We had a great uh, pitching rotation. Mark Gubaza, Brett Saberhagen, uh, Danny Jackson, on and on. And we had a really good pitching staff. And then we had timely hitting. Of course, we had you know Hall of Famer George Brett. But the key um, to us winning the World Series that year was excellent pitching, uh, holding the opponents to very few runs. We were lucky on the injury front. We didn't have many injuries. And then we had timely hitting. Um, we didn't have a lot of power hitters. We had Steve Balboni. That was about it. And then you know good solid base running and and. Uh, like the current Royals, real timely uh, hitting and then excellent defense. So that was a combination that allowed us to uh, rise to the top. After the 1985 World Series, the Royals had a rough patch of 29 years without making the postseason. In the 2000s, just horrible. I think we had like six or seven 100 loss seasons, and we were just really, really not good. Um, and obviously hadn't made the playoffs since 85 when we won World Series. So. It was rough. I mean, it was it was hard to be a fan. I mean, I still was always a fan, but it's a lot more fun when you actually feel like you have a chance to compete and the season's not over by June when you're, like, in last place or something. So um, last year really revived a lot of people, I think, uh, including myself, and um, just happy to see them, you know, get back to uh, playing competitive ball. This past October, the Royals ended the 29-year playoff drought by making the playoffs and then advancing to the World Series. I think it revived the whole, because at one point in time, Kansas City was a great baseball town, and when you lose so often for that long and you're never good, it kind of beat some fans down a little bit. Um, and I just think it revived everyone's enthusiasm and excitement and energy for the Royals. And it's just really cool to see now that we're even starting this next season, we're kind of picking up where we left off and we're still good. We didn't just have one fluky year. So I, I think it just really revived everyone's love for baseball. I mean, I was, that's how I felt. I just, I felt kind of rejuvenated and, and um, I hadn't watched like daily, watched or paid attention to games in like a long time. Uh, what was your favorite moment from the last year's playoffs? Oh, gosh, uh, probably the wild card game. I mean, you know, we, that's a classic example of how you just want to get into the playoffs, 
and uh, get on the dance floor, if you will, and, and be in postseason play. So I think it was good that we got in the way we got in. I mean, we earned it. It was a very exciting fashion versus the A's. So that was probably the, the best moment of last year. From the playoff last year. Favorite moment was when um, we were playing the Angels in the ALDS and uh, Kane, Lorenzo Kane made those two back-to-back -back catches. Um, the first one, he was an even a better catch than the second one. He came in and ran all the way into like shallow left center and, and dove like headlong, made a backhand catch on Pujols. And then the second one, so that led up to my favorite moment probably in a long time, was where he, he slid in feet first and like stole that line drive hit away from Howie Kendrick. And then he got up and like just like did that like fist pump and just started going crazy. I was doing the same thing in my house. Like I felt, I felt like I had just made that play. Like I was so pumped up. I felt like I was in that game. I mean, it, the emotion was great.